to them. There was great response by Nehemiah, a tremendous response, so powerful. So when we look over all of this, some of it's going to be really, really ugly stuff to think about in the next few hours here. And I'm going to tell you, and some of it's going to shock some of you from the area of Pennsylvania and this area that we're in, because we've been into your state 150, 160 times in the last 20-some years with prayers coming into the state, with intercession coming into the state, and dealing with victims of the underground, victims of SRA, MPD. We'll explain those terms in a little bit. But all of this ties in together, whether you're thinking in terms of the sky, whether you're thinking in terms of the underground, you're thinking in terms of the drugs and the crazy things that are going on, let alone the world that we live in, the world that we live in with the you know ISIS and Ebola and, and war and, and the breaking down and the corruption in governments and so forth. Uh, the, the truth is the days of Noah. Now, now Noah was um, Noah was really he was good, but because but the days of Noah were not Genesis six. You know, all it is is the, their their minds and their hearts packed with evil. But again, what most and I never heard a sermon in thirty nine years of my own life in a regular church service about the Nephilim, about the giants, and why the Benai Elohim came down and engaged the women and did what they did and then came again later. And, and we could say, well, that's just old stuff. That's stuff from the Old Testament. No, it has everything to do with the end times. It has everything to do with the Antichrist, the false prophet, and all that's going on. And there's no question that uh, the spirit of Antichrist has been operative. And we need to understand that one-third of the, of the New Testament is prophecy. And the majority of the prophecies speak about the sequential development of the satanic side more than the rapture, the millennium, and the great white throne judgment put together. There is such intel, such infallible, accurate intel that God has given to say, this is the sequential evolutionary development of the dark side. And here's what they're going to do, and here's what they're going to develop, and here's what they're going to put into the world. And, and right now, in my estimation, my opinion, we are bulging at the seams. Because I already believe the Antichrist is out there waiting for the restrainer to be removed and for his apocalypse to the world. I believe that shadow government is far more intact on a global scale than anybody understands. I believe that what we read about in Scripture in Daniel, or in uh, Revelation 6, or in Revelation 13, uh, are some of the events when Jesus spoke about it in Matthew 24 concerning the days of Noah, that they would be unprecedented. You would not be able to go back in history and say, this is like the days of uh, Daniel, or this is like uh, the days of the Nazis. This will so exceed the sum total of the radical evil in history that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, that it, it's not only unprecedented, that we read later on in, in Revelation, that men's hearts will fail them for fear. Uh, there's going to be enormous fear. There's going to be enormous Enormous, enormous things occurring. So today I'm going to go over, um, why even talk about it? Why should the body of Christ get into this at all? I pastored 30 years, but while I did that, we did the Shatter the Darkness stuff, and we launched out six years ago. And we have seen that the world is listening. The world is um, crying for the answers. The world's wondering why they're they're. The, the, the possessions are up and sleep paralysis is here and, and the bazaars around us and what's happening in the skies and what's happening in the military. Uh, what we hear in the news is one thing. Ebola. Ebola, the, the, the nurse that came from Texas, came 20, um, 20 miles down the street from me in the Akron area where I live. 160 people were quarantined. Uh, schools, they didn't tell you about this, schools shut down and businesses shut down. And Homeland Security came in. They they gave they gave um, they gave uh, hazmat type suits to all of the uh, officers in Cleveland. They were really preparing that if something uh, massive. The good news in Akron is that of the 160 quarantined after all these days did not show up with anything. But we understand the the the, the plight of that. And 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 you know when we bring this stuff out, what I'm going to tell you right now. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to, it's going to be kind of astounding. And some of the stats that I'm going to give late in, in this morning, you're going to wonder about. And I, and, I, and I appreciate that. You're going to even kind of maybe challenge that. And I can appreciate that.
But 30 years on the field, just in the area of satanic ritual abuse, going to the underground, counter infiltrating, going after it and looking at it and engaging it. Um, we, the stuff that we're going to talk about a lot today is not in the regular, the regular news is bad enough, right? Sometimes bad enough, you know? And um, that's why every single day we can have, but again, every single day in the, in the context of all of it, there is still the sense of joy in the Lord, the victory of Christ, the answer, the brilliant gospel of God in Christ, the message of hope to the rest of the world, the indestructible um, gift and in, in eternal life. And when we look at the uh, in what I call the indestructible immortality that God gives in Christ, should astound the transhumanists and the rest of the world. But they're trying to do it on their own. Uh, the days of Noah, the conference that we're in right now, um, we must. We, we got to engage this. I think that uh, if we leave this up to the rest of the world, the rest of the world's going to be. Um, it's going to be propaganda. It's going to be the enemy's propaganda in convincing the world. If you think in terms of New Agers, a billion worldwide, maybe now. If you think in terms of people on the subject of the Nephilim, isn't this kind of crazy? You're talking about angels coming down, you know, bad angels coming down, engaging women and creating offspring that were mutant, whose DNA would have been completely altered. They were giants. You could read all the extra biblical literature, but it, but listen, it begins with us. This story of the giants, this story of the alteration of human DNA and the attempt to make some kind of super being, um, that begins with us in Scripture. As we look at this, I'm going to go over probably about 16 reasons why. I'm going to show you a video also, but I'm going to give you some reasons why we should know this content, that we should have an answer for the world, so that when the world is out there pining away, asking or even embracing the deception, believers cannot just sit back silent and ignorant and unaware as if all we're going to do is hide in a little cave and wait till Jesus gets us out of here. That's not the um, description Jesus gives concerning the body of Christ when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And so I hope that this outrages you in the sense of the, the spirit of God's power to say, you know, we are going to rage against the dark side in the context of doing the mission of Jesus because it's needed in the world we have right now. It's being discussed the world over. It's a global discussion. The globe is speaking about it. More books on the Nephilim has been written than any time in history. There's um, every kind of background, whether it's military and science and transhumanists or the old occultists and, and the rest we're going to look at. Everybody's really into this and they're talking and they're writing and they're doing video and there's movies and all the rest. So it's a global discussion and we need to be at the forefront of that global discussion. It's ours to discuss. You go back to Genesis again. There were giants in the earth, or the Nephilim were in the earth. And so when you think in terms of the flood, I see the flood as God's saving act. Not just judgment. He saved humanity. The only humanity, basically, pure humanity left was Noah and the, and the rest that, that got into the ark. And if we can understand the years upon years upon years of the presence of the Nephilim, of another generation of them, as they spread everywhere, we have no idea how huge this, you know, really, you know, uh, expanded itself the world over. And only now, with the digging up of Nephilim architecture around the world, are we understanding that this was a global phenomenon that wasn't just in a little area with four or five little, you know, ogre giants and, you know, scaring people, you know, and, and letting them, you know, like a troll, not letting them cross the bridge or something like that. This was huge, huge in the world prior to Genesis 6. And God came to save humanity from being utterly and completely annihilated and a a mutated humanity or mutated uh, beings uh, becoming the predominant ones. The Numbers 13, we have it again later after the flood, the Nephilim, the Nephilim, the, the Senech. And you can go through the Imims or the Zemzumis and all the rest of these tribes. If we relook at the book of the Old Testament, we're going to relook at um, the tribes that were so infested demonically. The demon gods that they were engaging, Israel was literally saturated. There was no secularism 
Every single tribe was just absolutely into gods and demon gods and, and uh, human and child sacrifice and cannibalism. There's a reason why God had to lead them to um, rid the earth of, of uh, the, the tribes. You, you wonder about that sometimes. But you're talking about such demonization, such alterations in humanity and in the bloodline, and the child human sacrifice uh, was, I mean, it, it just, it, you know, you go, again, go back through the Old Testament. It was enormous. That is what Israel continued to have to fight. Every nation that came was a nation that understood how to summon the powers and uh, be empowered and come with a rage against Israel because Israel was to be the place where you know God's presence and the law of God and, and the prophecies and the rest was coming. And there was a constant, constant goal of annihilation and or assimilation of Israel. Compromise, compromise the believers, sometimes that's good enough. Cripple the body of Christ, that's, that's the goal. If they can't annihilate the body of Christ, just cripple it. They can't, um, if they can't annihilate you, the dark side just wants to cripple you, make you ineffective, grieve the Spirit of God, uh, not do the mission of God, don't do the works of Jesus, and just be silent. If they say be silent and shut up and this is not your, this is not your game, then the enemy has uh, already won in that aspect. The body of Christ should be a raging, loud, powerful, supernatural, incredible, uh, indestructible force that constantly goes forward in the world. But there is great opposition. Great opposition all around us. Now, if you look at the slide, Danikin, anybody know uh, Chariots of the Gods? Van Danikin, sure. He's considered the most read author in all the world. Hundreds of millions have seen the films, have read the books. Uh, one of the most read authors in all of the world. Now, if you read uh, The Return of the Gods and some of the other books by Van Doniken, if you understand what he's really writing, you're, you're finding him shredding the scriptures, renouncing Christ, pulling apart all of Christianity, inserting a whole nother, a whole nother interpretation of scriptures of extraterrestrials and a whole version of, uh, of uh, and I want to call it reality, because he's taken us outside of reality. And so when you see someone like this influencing tens of millions upon millions the world over, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist operating, whether New Age, ufology, the underground, wherever it may operate, is going to do two things constantly. Number one, seek to rid, rid or or uh, extract or remove uh, the real Christ, and then always replace with a dumbed-down, de-deified, non-saving Christ. Whether the Nicolaitans, the Gnostics, the New Age, whether you look at occultism across the board, wherever the spirit of Antichrist is operative, the spirit of Antichrist is always there to silence the real message, to strip the deity off, and to replace with a different concept. And so you've got uh, ufologists, you've got abductees, you've got uh, those who are seeking the extraterrestrials, you've got the entire New Age movement on a global scale. They're all looking at the same thing. A, a version of a fake Christ, no salvation, set them aside because they're going to be, by the spirit guides that, that have guided them, the entities that have talked to them, able to evolve and become like God's. The old lie in Genesis 3 is the predominant prophetic doctrine wherever the spirit of Antichrist has, um, has, uh, has won out in the hearts and minds of writers, of movie, make, movie makers, of, of, uh, and I'm going to say now we're, we're at the impact of billions that are in, in, the, in the area of deception. As it was in the days of Noah, Matthew 24, when you read it, what do we have? Jesus is going to give this entire litany, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, the rest, all the things that are going on, the abounding of wickedness so much, the, the concern about losing your love, and all the rest. But it begins with what? It begins with deception. Don't let anybody deceive you. It begins with deception. Behind the alterations and behind the violence and behind the dismantling of the world right now is a spiritual presence that not only exists, but we have to understand how absolutely uh, definitive, 
uh, in its design and how absolutely global in its quest they really are. Scripture is the only thing that brings the revelation of this out to us. There's no one else going to do this for us. Nostradamus, put him in the trash can. Edgar Casey, throw him out the window. Sylvia Brown, burn the books. <laughs> Please understand, the spirit of Antichrist operates, you know, the egg, the satanic eggs, they're not all in one basket. In the skies, on the ground, underground, history. We're going to find out that World War II was never, never, never a simple political ideology. It was a spiritual revelation turned into political ideology for a spiritual quest that scratches at the surface of what is to come. And what began in the 30s and what ended somewhere around the middle 40s didn't really end. What piled up there in Europe simply went worldwide and began to dig in around the world. It was beginning to show its head on a global scale, right? The vast deception is so big and so broad and so wide. I want, I want you to get the picture here today because if you think in terms of Goliath on the field, if you think in terms of Goliath coming out and, and standing, and I believe he was probably Nephilim in some measure because this giant uh, blasphemer was standing there just railing against God day after day after day after day after day. And the troops of God were in the rocks. They were hiding out in the rocks. These experienced warriors, these tremendous fighters in Israel, wouldn't go down to the field to meet Goliath. Would you? I'm going to tell you on the field right now, it's like Goliath. I'm going to tell you on the field that it's going to be Goliath screaming and screaming and screaming to the world. Your God is nothing, blaspheming. When Antichrist comes, one of the characteristics is his mouth. How loud and, and pompous and arrogant and boastful and, and, and he's going to rail against God and all who's in heaven, according to the book of Daniel. God begins 2,600 years ago to warn us what I believe is in place and is about to erupt into the world right now. When we look at all of this, the doctrines of the new age, occultism, all teach the same thing, an evolution to Godhood. There is a alteration in DNA, whether the transhumanists or the New Agers and uh, the uh, DNA activation, the ascension, or the undergrounders, or going back to Hitler and Lebensborn and the Aryan race. There is a spiritual, uh, spiritually guided agenda for the alteration of humanity and turning them into something that the dark side can use to help eradicate the other side. That happened in pre-flood, pre that happened afterwards. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is embedded on a global scale. The concept, the concept of a lie, of an evolution, Genesis 3, right? The shining one, the, you know, Satan's there and he's engaging. He knows the word of God, he knows where to battle, he knows where to fight. God gave the equivalent of one singular scripture that preserved humanity. Think about that in your devotions. Think about that in your spiritual warfare. Think about that in your walk. One, one scripture verse can make all the difference in your life. Every scripture verse packed with revelation from God for our strength, for our knowing, for our growing. One scripture verse that Satan attacked and wanted to alter and say God's a liar and, and, and go after God's character and said, no, he doesn't want you to do this. There could be an evolution to Godhood through a secret elite knowledge. Just come this way. And so an exchange occurred. The moment the exchange occurred... And again, it wasn't us alone. It wasn't just man some days decided, you know, we're going to stand up, we're going to sin. There was no concept of that. We stood in majesty. We're the Imago Dei. We were the, uh, we were the bearing the image and the likeness of God. We are eternal. There was no death. There was no disease. I don't even think Adam and Eve argued much. Okay. But an exchange occurred that altered us on a spiritual level, but don't divorce spiritual level from physical level. It's inseparably intertwined. And so when this exchange occurred, the glory of God for the finite, the truth of God for the lie, something actually physiologically, spiritually occurred. Uh, the Spirit of God goes out, but a sin code comes in. Satan's rights comes in. A death code all of a sudden enters in. 
Did not God say that if you do this in dying, the Hebrew is, in dying you shall die. If you do this, you shall surely die. Satan railed against that. There was no experience. You go all the way to verse Corinthians 15, you're going to find out that death is an enemy in the sight of God. Death is an enemy that Jesus Christ conquered at the cross. He blasted apart the finality of death at the cross. And the transhumanists are seeking a way to extract the death gene out of the DNA and find an immortal gene and gene splice the immortal gene in. I have to ask, I have to ask, ask them a question. Where are they going to get the immortal gene when they can't even define immortality? I'll give you some of that this afternoon concerning the transhumanist meeting we went to that the top physicists, geneticists, inventors, scientists, including Ray Kurzweil and Singularity, they're all, they're, it's a global phenomenon and billions are being spent to try to find immortality and conquer death. But it's not a scientific venture. I'll show you that in a few moments. Military super soldiers. Again, the Nazis, it wasn't just the Germans. Well, I've, I've been to Germany. I love the German people. I met the Germans. I, would, I, I, went to, I went to Himmler's castle and stood in the Hall of the Dead and prayed against it and prayed against uh, all the radical evil and prayed against the uh, sorcery and the um, rituals that were done in the, in the Hall of the Dead. Vadelsberg Castle was going to be the center of the earth where they were going to rule the entire planet from a place that is one of the considered one of the most uh, dark, powerful uh, portholes to hell itself. Then we went to Auschwitz after that and stood in Auschwitz. And I stood in Auschwitz on a cold, rainy, cloudy day on the, uh, the little block areas. The train was over here on the sides so where the, uh, where the uh, dormitories. And the lady in front of the, our little group says, and, and, and right there, pointing where I was, right there is where Mingala stood. Where Mingala stood, and here's where he would decide, you go to these ones, and you go to these ones, and the twins, you're going to go over here. And, and, and I don't even know if we understand the depths of Auschwitz. They took us into the gas chambers, took us to the ovens, where hundreds daily were shoveled in, burned, and shoveled out, only to shovel more in and shovel them out. It was a factory of burning humans. It was a factory of eliminating tens of thousands of upon thousands upon thousands, and there are about 900 other camps that most of us don't even know about. And it was a spiritually driven issue. Eliminate uh, Judaism, because there's prophecies concerning that in the future. Uh, eliminate Israel, there's prophecies concerning that in the future. Satan understands prophecy. Revelation 12, he knows that his time is short, right? How does he know that? How did he equate that his time is short, that he's filled with wrath? The Greek word is uh, he's filled with fury in the earth right now because he knows his time is short. You know, you know what his basis concerning his time is short? Is the Apocalypse Jesu Christu, Revelation 19, the visible return of Christ and the annihilation of the Antichrist and the false prophet. And then chapter 20, one angel of God is sent to grab a hold of Satan, wrap him up with a chain, and throw him into the abyss. They know that all of this is real. I'm not sure we in the body of Christ understand how real the abyss, Satan, the demonic world, and the entire battle is a spiritual battle. I don't, I don't know if we understand all that. I don't know if we understand how demonstrative it will get in the end of days prior to us being out of here. The Nordmen, the Aryans... Who were the Aryans, according to Helena Blavatsky? Who were the Aryans in their discovery of, a, of a, the Hyperboleans and the Lumerians? and the Who were the Aryans? Well, the, the Himmler and Hitler and others, and, and the sorcerers behind that, and, and Vili God and the rest of them believed that the Aryans were a godmen race, a super race of tall, white, uh, white hair, blue-eyed uh, godmen that had powers of telekinesis and abilities, and they were the real uh, race of man, and that, that uh, humanity got corrupted, and so the spiritual revelation was uh, you know, embedded in the Nazi leadership, and this is where they come to believe the Jews were a pig race, and we must annihilate all of them and completely eradicate the earth of them, then they were going to go after everybody else, of course. While they were doing the battle, while they're doing the war, while they're doing the fighting, while they're doing the stuff in the skies over London and the United States enters in, most of them didn't understand that they initiated Lebensborn. 
They initiated a belief based on a spiritual belief that they had to somehow, some way, take Germans of Aryan blood that can prove in some way they had some kind of ancestry to the ancient god men. So they're going to have them selectively breed in cemeteries, wherever there was a, a spiritual day, any, anything that would help enhance the spiritual side of their selective breeding so that they could create uh, an area, not with 2% of the godmen blood or, or godmen uh, DNA, but all of a sudden have 4% or 8% or 16%. And then when those Aryan uh, new babies that have greater um, capacity would be also uh, selectively uh, breeding each other, you know, breeding with each other, they would create another generation, 50% and 80%. Their entire belief was they could back breed, back breed by generations and return and, and reproduce godmen, Nephilim, hybrids. They created Lebensborn. The reason they wanted to create the Godmen in Hitler and Himmler's mind, they needed troops on a global scale to enforce and maintain a 1,000 year Reich. Sounds, sounds counterfeit to the 1,000 year millennium. I want you to hear me when we talk about the troops of Antichrist. Many know about the Antichrist, the false prophet, end of days. But throughout uh, Scripture, old and new, and especially when we get to Revelation 19, there is this incredible picture of the massive, massive troops of Antichrist. Antichrist cannot come to power in the world without them. He cannot conquer the world without them. But I'm going to tell you right now that I believe since the late 40s and that has been deeply secretive and underground for a long, long time, it's surfacing more and more and more on a multi-continental level and a multinational level is the hidden troops by anywhere from 40 to 100 million worldwide who are considered um, superior humans, altered humans, Ubermann, and the coming troops of Antichrist. Stalin believed in hybrids. It's a picture of Ivanov, Professor Ivanov, to take apes, to take them and breed them with humans and create kind of an altered uh, Russian, very strong, uh, controllable, you know, power war here. The concept, again, comes from the concept of the Nazis. You look to the little picture here, and here's, let me just read it to you. In that little thing where it says potential, 1st Earth Battalion, little soldier there, this is the United States. I read the manual. You know who gave me the manual? The manual was given to me in the early 90s by a Fort Bragg Psy warrior who had numerous personalities, spoke numerous languages, was incredibly strong in weapons, but had enormous powers demonically. Psy warrior handed this and said, this is, this is part of what we're about. Let me read to you what was written by Colonel Shannon, Lieutenant Colonel Shannon back then. What are the true limits to human potential? In the final analysis, they seem to be a joke. The culture imposes a language of the impossible. Possible. Most uh, humans accept those limits. And all to uh, their, again, loss of potential and so forth. Then he says here, but there are those who will believe this, that, that, um, that there are those who can have minds that can go faster than a computer, that can um, work, walk on fire, calculate faster than a computer, travel into new places in the universe through their minds, projection, remote viewing, astral projection, um, they can uh, stop their own hearts with no ill effects. They can see into the future. There are no limits in the First Earth Battalion. Lieutenant Colonel Shannon has been recalled to Homeland Security. Behind this concept of New Age soldiers that have the powers of clairvoyance and telekinesis and telepathy and the rest of that back in the 70s was the development of, of, of Goat Lab in Fort Bragg where they were training cyborg warriors to uh, project their energies to explode the uh, heart of a goat. 
But that's not where it, it, it stopped. Now, be, beyond that was this, um, the, the scientists of the Nazis that came over. Uh, they were being taken all over the place. And a black, I call it a black Trojan horse, a satanic Trojan horse. Uh, the military wanted to have any kind of advantage. And the warning to DARPA and to militaries of the world, you can be sure that the dark side will take the desperation of military leaders who have thrown out e ethics in every single way just to gain just to gain military superiority, they're willing to take in anything, even other entities, non-human presence to communicate. They're willing to alter humanity. They're willing to create in the United States military system from the 50s up, altered humans, programmed humans, assassins. If you think today that uh, the story of assassins and shooters like uh, Jared and the rest uh, was, is, is something new, it's just tiny eruptions of what's underground, what's developed, what's among us, what may be in this building today. Because I'm standing on the edge in Pennsylvania, where we've been into your state 150, 160, I don't even know, 170 times in the last 22 years. Tracking Lebensborn, tracking the Nazi agenda, tracking the development of the troops of Antichrist. We've engaged four generations of them. Anywhere from 68... Years was born was the spring of life, the place where all throughout Germany they had these buildings and they, they, were, they were producing, some say 400, some say 900,000 Aryan babies between 1939 and 1941, 42. That when the rat lines, you know, began to shove out all the SS troops and all of these, what was called the Black Flame, this underground, very dark, very satanic order that would then go into uh, nations and into, you know, over to other continents all around the world to do one thing, to continue the agenda that began with them in, uh, in Germany. There's the concept of sacred blood, Aryan blood, charged blood, super blood, they believed in. In breeding, they would continue to do this until the possibility of a back breed. Now, watch this short video. It's about the book. Um, but I want you to see the concepts. I didn't make this video. Somebody made this about the, the book, and um, we just lost our ability here again. I don't know why we did that. Let me see if I can find it. We're going to have to go back. And do this again. If I can. Let's see if I can find that. And I hope that tonight you will ask some questions about some of this because when I give you some of the stats and other things, um, and because we are here among you in PA, by providence, I'm going to tell you something about your state that uh, you may ne never have heard of. We're going to do this again, aren't we? Well, let me see if I could do it a different way here for you. Give me just a moment. Here we go.
And that's all I'm going to give you of that right there because uh, there is... Um, Chris White did that um, video years ago when he first uh, looked at the material, looked at the um, stuff that we were doing. Uh, and I, I, uh, I, I look at the world that we're living in and I see all the public information. But we've been digging into the underground uh, now for probably uh, 30, 31, 32 years. We learned in the, in the beginning of dealing with what we believe. We didn't understand what they were in the beginning. I mean, demon possession is one thing. I mean, all of a sudden, you got some you know, kid falling to the ground in a growly, yelling, mocking voice, and the authority of Jesus commands, shut up, get out of him, leave him, release him, and see the power of, of Jesus and the authority of Jesus annihilate the work of the enemy and a kid being set free. But we began to you know, engage in 1980, not just uh, demonized individuals, but individuals that had also inside of them, we didn't know this in the beginning, but all or personalities that were purposely created inside of them. Now, in the second session this morning, I'm going to explain the splitting, the programming, and the rest of that that goes back to the Levensborn, goes back to the goal of creating Godmen, a, a, um, a military troop uh, that would be able to go global and enforce a, a, a global riot, a global order. Traditional Satanism. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in the second session in a little bit more detail. But traditional Satanism, to go on with all of the, you know, we, we look in the world that we're living in right now, look, look at the internet a little bit on this subject. What we knew in law enforcement in the 80s and the early 90s and had ritual books and ritual crime and the rest of that is now all over the web everywhere. Rituals of human sacrifice that was once uh, secretive and in books of shadows and things like that, that was all, that was all separate and not a whole lot of individuals had a hold of that. But now with the web, we have every kind of concept. I don't, I don't give the websites out that we uh, search out. Uh, I don't give the names of the books and the underground books, like the Devil's Bible and the others that we uh, have researched, nor of the confiscated books of shadows or ritual books that we've gotten from the underground. Because the, the rituals have been given by the demons themselves. They are the, um, the calling cards. It's as if the demon says, this is the way. If you do this ritual in this direction, in this way, and you do it this precision, you use this, this, and this, and we require blood, then we'll come. And so blood human sacrifice is the number one doorway for the demons to come into this side. They're creating a doorway. Going back to the Nephilim structures in the Old Testament, um, or if you look even at Chechen Itza, you've seen the ziggurat there, correct? Anybody been there at all to that place? Okay. You have not modern day Mayans playing flutes and selling, you know, blankets. In that day, you have Katsikoatl, who may have been Nephilim oriented, who may have been one of what we're talking about. The entire architecture in which they don't even have half of it uncovered all through that whole region is not even uncovered. And the Italian archaeologist that we read and we've mentioned before said that in the last couple of years, 50 to 70,000 human sacrifices occurred. The ziggurats, in my estimation, in my opinion, are but um, Nephilim architecture. If you think of the Old Testament book of Exodus, the Spirit of God came and gave craftsmanship to builders of the temple of God. Gave design. It was precise, out of heaven. Everything was, um, was uh, God's architecture concerning uh, the Old Testament temple. And the Spirit of God guided and led, and the blueprints were coming from the hand of God. Well, in contrast to that... Think in terms now of the highly and deeply and generational tribes of the Old Testament. The Philistines and the Moabites. The Moabites that would create um, temples to the gods guided by the spirits in contrast to what God did. And if you think in terms of the ancient Nephilim architecture where human sacrifice, move a little forward from um, the Mayans and go to the Aztecs. They found... 140,000 human skulls on racks in the days of Kuku Khan. The ancient days in which 
these things were occurring on a global scale, whether you go to the, the coast of China or the Bosnian pyramids, and you know, you go all the way around the world with the ziggurats where they're creating a massive uh, portal, a massive doorway to the heavens. Where are the demons, where are these spirits located? How many here know Ephesians chapter 6 pretty well? I mean, you know, ch chapter 6, verse 10, be empowered by the mighty, you know, strength of God. There's this picture of us being, you know, told, you know, literally it's in the Greek in the passive. Allow yourselves to be empowered by the might, mighty strength of God. How do you do that? Put on the full armor of God. Why do you got to do that? To take your stand against the devil and his, and his schemes. For your struggle is not against flesh and blood, we read it in the English, but against principalities and powers and evil forces, Right? In the Greek, the Spirit of God defines the species of the dark side. Cosmocrater, the archon, the uh, exousia, the porneus numenicae. Each different located in the epihuronos, the heavenlies, right above our heads. On a global scale, the, the biblical picture, the biblical revelation is in the skies above us, in the immediate dense atmosphere above us, raining down and operative into the earth, are hundreds of millions of the species of the dark side. We call them demons or unclean spirits and so forth, or the fallen angel issue. But the Spirit of God named them. Now, New Agers and others and occultists, they've named them the uh, Great White Brotherhood, the Ascended Masters, the, the secret chiefs that are guiding the world. Modern-day transhumanists and billionaire Dmitry Itzkov and the Russian cosmists have joined to say that the ancient gods are operating with the scientists to recreate godmen on the earth. The traditional Satanists believe that there's going to be, through their version of Lucifer, an evolution to godhood through the elite secret knowledge that Lucifer, old and new, shamanism around the world. You know, shamans, you know all the shamans that leave their bodies. All the shamans go and inter interact with the Indies all over. The shamans all believe they've helped create um, spirit babies. The shamans uh, have a major role to play in interaction with the spirits and creating um, offspring. Movies, TV, music, gaming, it's all there. Whether regular rock groups called Nephilim, uh, movies like Prometheus and others. I mean, they're just loaded. So why again, why even discuss all of this? Why talk about it? Why not just simply be happy in Jesus and just wait till we're out of here? Well, I think because the world, the world is our mission field. Because I think that we as Christians are, 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 are better armed, not only in, in all of the biblical language and, and, and content that, that deals with this, that has the foundations of all of what this is about, that gives us the insight to be able to say, this is exactly what the dark side is going to do. This is exactly what he's doing in the world. So when people are saying, man, the world's messed up, and they use all their language, and they, they, they sing out their lyrics uh, in, in drug-infested, uh, you know, occult-oriented new uh, pop music, they're intertwining all, all of this. Altered humans, Nephilim. Satanic ritual abuse. Satanic ritual abuse and multiple personality disorder. How many have heard of that? I mean, you've heard of it. Okay, I, I think they probably have. We can, uh, we can look at modern day satanic ritual abuse. We can look at what's occurring that began in the 70s, late 70s, went into the 80s. By 1994, Holly Hector from Centennial Hospital in Denver estimated 2.4 million cases. Secular psychiatrist Colin Ross estimated 10 million cases. Secular psychologist out of Canada who does nothing but work with this field, 10 million in the United States. Every, and we've said this now for years, every single sock ward, every single state, every single city in the United States has victims of satanic ritual abuse whose inside personalities have been split, programmed, demonized, and are part of an agenda. Now, the secular world doesn't understand it all. The problem with terming it satanic ritual abuse and or multiple personality disorder, that's modern day in the news material. 
That's, that's what the world is saying. That's, that's the designations they're giving. But in working with them and engaging them and researching them and helping them and seeing them come out of this and delivered and healed and so forth, they know who they are. They're the chosen ones. They're the select ones. They're the ones bred. They're the new Ubermann. They are the new hybrids. They believe they are the troops of Antichrist. Whether you believe this or not, they do. In the SRA MPD world, in which Pennsylvania is one of the one of the states in which the, the, the numbers of victims more than any other state come to us. We've been in your state, like I said, 150, 160, 170 times. There's not a city, not a location, not a place that we've not been in, in all of Pennsylvania that does not have satanic, richly abused individuals in sock wards, counseling centers, showing up in churches for the last 30 years. And the first generation that are now between 55 and 65 had had children. And if nobody interrupted them and they didn't get delivered and they didn't get saved, their children are also SRA, MPD, and they are part of the troops of Antichrist. And if nobody interrupts the second generation that are now between 45 or 35 and 45, then the guarantee is that their children, the grandchildren of the first generation, between the ages of maybe you know 18 and 27, they are SRA, MPD. And if nobody interrupts them, the fourth generation that we're dealing with, between 4 and 8 and 12 and 13 and 15, are SRA and MPD. In children's sock wards all over America, they're showing up. In Pennsylvania, we have a project called Project Confirm. We have a paid individual contacting every single city in every location in Pennsylvania. They're trying to bring to me the literature, the materials, the, the paperwork on what we've always believed concerning Pennsylvania. That uh, every psych ward, every counseling center, every single city, every single location into the little hollers uh, of Pennsylvania have SRA MPD victims. They're here in Pennsylvania by the tens of thousands. You cannot have an SRA MPD individual unless you have those who knew how to do this and knew the agenda to take and selectively breed in satanic rituals and satanic powers and cause the conception to demonize the fetus and begin to cause trauma inside the womb so they can begin to split the child into separate personalities so they can give the personalities different jobs and a priestess, a runner, a sex slave, and a shooter, and so forth forth on the inside, demonizing them with pro and programming and putting them down. And you cannot have those who are doing this starting in the 50s here in PA and across the United States without them being hardcore underground Luciferians that do human blood sacrifice. So what I'm going to tell you, and I've been saying concerning America, the underworld is really real. And that in every city, in every state, United States, and in every city, in every location in Pennsylvania, you have had the ancient, real, blood and guts, Luciferian, coven-oriented, human, sacrificial-oriented uh, groups that are producing what they believe, not victims, but superior humans. Um, not SRA and PD, but chosen ones. We're going to give definitive uh, insight to that in the second session this morning. Another reason to know archaeology, and, and L.A. is going to bring you this. He's going to just uh, unleash on you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being stared at by a live audience, but some crazy-looking heads back here. Um, if any of them move or begin to speak, you better rebuke it quickly. Archaeology, skulls, bones, giants, unearthed, it's constantly developing more and more and more and more. And L.A. is going to bring that to you concerning skulls and bones and places around the world. Nephilim. Number 12, uh, the transhumanism and the gods. Now I went to New York, Ray Kurzweil, the geneticist, all the rest of these guys from around the world about a year ago. We went to uh, Lincoln Plaza and listened. $1,000 a ticket. Somebody wanted me to go, paid my ticket, and I got to sit in the front to sit there and look at the chief engineer of Google, Ray Kurzweil. And geneticists and theoretical physicists 
and scientists and inventors, all proclaiming their absolute hatred, hatred of death, that they're going to uh, be able to accomplish immortality by 2045, and they're going to do it through science. What they did not tell us, that on the same stage, on Saturday, it was all the, on Friday and Saturday, all the scientists, but pretty soon they began to bring Hindi, they began to bring pantheistic uh, gurus and Russian cosmists. Their uh, cosmist is somebody who's um, joining theosophy, the old writings of Helena Blavatsky and Alice Bailey and others with uh, Hindu writings, New Age materials, all kind of combining it together uh, under, under a teaching from Nikolai Fedorov in Russia. Russia is packed with Russian cosmism. And they believe, and on the stage where I was that day, with all the top scientists and geneticists in the world, you know, there on that stage, sitting on the stage were the, were the gurus who put up on the big screen pictures of the gods in the heavenlies, the, the cosmocraters, the archon, these beings that we're in battle against, and said, these are the beings that are communicating to us they want to return to the godmen, and they are helping the scientists. They are literally helping the scientists to accomplish the goal of a superior human and bringing about an evolution to immortality and to godhood. Whether you look at it under the carpet, underneath, which we've done for 30 years, or you look at it, the top scientists in the world, geneticists and so forth, what I believe a demon, a demon entity did back in the 1930s, getting a hold of the lady and fusing into her, she wrote 21 volumes of books. Dadake Demonoia, 1 Timothy 4, 1. The Spirit expressly says that in the end of days, Planos, another class of demonic presence. These spirits seducing demons are going to come, and they're going to deceive the many. And then they're going to get some individuals, and they're going to lead them to write to write Dadake Demonoia, Writings of the Demons. And so she was guided to write a book called The Externalization of the Hierarchy in 1937. The Externalization of the Hierarchy was a demonic entity fused into her, giving dictation word by word to a book that would influence the world. And the books of Alice Bailey, guided by a demon, would become the spiritual backdrop, backbone to the United Nations. And is the backdrop to transhumanism. Number 13, dark occultism, Aleister Crowley. Anybody know about Aleister Crowley? The moon child. The moon child is all a concept of a human hybrid, a demon-human mix. What about the Babylon working? Anybody hear about the Babylon working? Uh, a, a rocket scientist, a United States rocket scientist in the Mojave Desert. Here's a rocket scientist working for the United States, very famous, very famous rocket scientist. JPL Labs and others uh, named a crater on the dark side of the moon after, after Jack Parsons. Lived in the area of Pasadena, California. Went to the Mojave Desert and did some of the darkest satanic rituals. Believed that he'd become the beast at one point. Believed that all Christians should be annihilated and eliminated and went to the Mojave Desert creating a sex magic act with individuals, reading a ritual in which they were to do the Babylon working and create a human demonic hybrid. They were conjuring what they believe the book of Revelation speaks about, the prostitute of Babylon, the, they called the whore of Babylon. They were summoning this entity to come into the sexual act and cause the conception and create a hybrid child. An American scientist, hailed as a, a great scientist, Jack Parsons, the Babylon working, one of the darkest of dark rituals that you can ever conceive. To read some of his writings, to read what he was really into, is astounding. The supernatural quest, Graham Hancock is not a Christian. Graham Hancock is not a believer in Christ. But Graham Hancock, in going the world over, why should believers know anything about any of this? Because I don't believe believers should be um, ignorant about the enemy's wiles, what he's doing. Because really the foundations of all of this is found in the Scripture and is packed in the prophecies, which is the intelligence that God gives us, uh, future intelligence. Listen, 
if you if you understand biblical prophecy, you understand there's futurologists out there, military threat analysis individuals and and futurologists and and those who are crunching the numbers and the web bot the the uh, military or the uh, the uh, internet's uh, you know technology of reading hundreds of millions of bytes of information and trying to describe and, and prophesy what is to come and even the technology of web bot on a global scale says the world feels fear the world feels that a catastrophic collapse is coming the world feels that something ominous is here in the air well I go back to this because here's a non-Christian, a non-believer, writing a book, influencing the world. This guy has gone down to um, Chechen Itza to meet up with other guys and take the drug ayahuasca because he wanted to experience getting out of his body and meeting the ascended masters, meeting the secret chiefs. He wanted to have an experience of engaging. Uh, Graham Hancock on Coast to Coast acknowledged one time that he'd probably done this about 40 times. Gateway drugs. And so a non-believer, a non-Christian, puts out a book for the world to read, and after he explains part of the whole of what he studied in, in alienology and, in, and among the shamans and all the rest, here's his conclusion in the end. Here's what he says. Look at the yellow. What do the spirits or the aliens, the non-human entities, what do these beings want is what he's saying. What do the beings want from us? It seems clear, even from this necessarily brief survey of the evidence, that what they want more than anything else is to mate with us and create hybrids. This simply begs the further question, of course, notably, why do they want that and how long have they wanted it? So we have a non-believer writing about this and, and doing his research worldwide that the supernatural entities that they're engaging and people are engaging around the world, that it's clear that there's a collective global effort by these entities to engage humanity and they want to, um, they want to mate with humanity. They somehow want to breed and create hybrids. Have you heard of uh, sleep paralysis? Has anybody experienced sleep paralysis? Just raise your hand, that's good. Something coming in your room, paralyzing you, pressing you down, a presence walked across your room, came onto your bed, pushed you down, held you down. In the last 20 some years, now hundreds of thousands are experiencing it the world over. Now the psychs have said, it's just your chemicals playing games with you. Your chemicals have decided to get together, intelligently discuss, and say, let's trick them that during the night we're going we're gonna to make them believe something came in the room and something pushed them down and that even they heard voices. So let's give you a drug to kind of stop that from occurring. They're, they're completely wrong. Sleep paralysis is nothing more than dark visitation, demons visiting humans. With the new uh, avenues of uh, astral projection, and as the Spirit of God said that in the end of days, the amounts of demons interacting with humans will be off the charts, beyond the old days, global scale. And so kids and women and men from around, and we've had them for 20 years coming to our offices, sleep paralysis, something walked in my room, Pastor Russ. Something came and, and I felt something brush by me. Something sat on my bed and I felt the bed go down. Something sat on me. All of a sudden I felt a pressure. All of a sudden I was filled with fear and I was paralyzed and I couldn't move. And I, I was trying to cry out, but I couldn't even hardly speak. And, and all of a sudden it pressed on me and pressed on me. And that's usually the stories you hear. And you hear a number of believers that are finally able to say in the midst of that, Jesus and all of a sudden, there's a backing off, and then they rebuke that and say, get out of here, and they call on the Lord, and all of a sudden, the, the presence goes away. But they don't understand why it was there and where it came from. The doorways. A demon can't come through without a doorway. Topon is the Greek word, a right, a real doorway, a reason to be there. Well, what nobody's really said or written about yet, the ultimate end of sleep paralysis in all the cases we've dealt with, and many of the cases we're reading about, both secular and in the, in the Christian materials, the entities pressing upon, if nothing is done, they press upon and press upon and press upon and seek sexual engagement. 
Secondarily, they seek, once they get to that level of sexual engagement, they're seeking to pull the person out of the body, to bring them into their realm. Why hundreds of thousands? Secular writer, secular writer speaking to the world. Can we answer Graham Hancock? Can we say, Graham Hancock, this is that which was spoken about in Genesis 6. This is what was talked about in, in Numbers chapter 13. This is what may be spoken about in the book of Revelation when one-fourth of mankind is killed, two billion people dead in less than a year maybe. God says the four reasons, war, famine, pestilence, and the beasts of the earth. The Theron. The only ones in the book of Revelation called Theron is the Antichrist and the false prophet. The Greek word goes into the Septuagint, goes back into its historical use as something bestial, violent, like non-human, uh, ripping, tearing is the, is, is the terminology. God designates the Antichrist as bestial, violent, tearing, ripping, and maybe not fully human. It is my opinion the Antichrist is a hybrid. That's my opinion. It is my opinion that it's not a man that gets possessed like the old movie showed us, and all of a sudden a man gets possessed and becomes the Antichrist. It is my belief that the Antichrist is not the Benai Elohim, but the fallen cherub himself that engages a bloodline-prepared counterfeit to Mary, engages her, and creates spirit-to-human-female egg, a counterfeit to the Incarnation. Everything Satan does is a counterfeit. Every single thing, doctrine, miracle signs, wonders, salvations, millenniums, all that, it's all absolutely contrary based on the biblical revelation that all that Satan does is contrary and counterfeit to the original. I have to believe the Antichrist is an absolute counterfeit to the incarnation. Jesus' bloodline in the, in the uh, we read in the Gospels, uh, the whole family, the bloodline goes pure human, all the way back to Adam. If you understand satanic ritual abuse, the Aryan and the spirit-guided belief that they could backbreed to the Nephilim, their belief is that, that charged individuals, altered individuals, and you keep building this and building this and building this until you have a prepared individual. Just as Mary was a prepared individual, so that the Spirit of God, we should know this as a Christian, we should know this as a believer. The Spirit of God to human female egg in the womb created the incarnation. God in human flesh in perfection. Astounding. Thomas falls down and he finally cries, My Lord and my God, capital G. In John's Gospel, we read very clearly that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. It's in the imperative in the Greek. It's uh, meaning, it's not that, God, that, that the Logos was created, not that the Logos all of a sudden was made. He always existed. The Logos is the eternal, uh, infinite, immortal God. Logos then, face to face, Greek word pros, face to face with God. God with God. God the Father, God the Son. God the Son, Logos, becomes human flesh. Verse 14, and God dwelt for a while among us. It's astounding, is it not, to think in terms of Messiah, the Savior, and all that He is, prophet, priest, and king, is God in human flesh. The prophets knew that. The apostles knew that. The angels of God knew that. The demons feared that. Was he half man, half God? No, in, in the concept of the incarnation, we have, we have fully God and fully man in one. The representation of humanity, Jesus won for us. This is why I like to say it on the radio broadcast worldwide. The hero of humanity is Jesus Christ. And I'm not sure that we understand, the world understands who he really is because the dumbing down, the spirit of Antichrist has communicated to billions. He's just a little guru. He's just a little rabbit's foot that you put in your pocket. He's just a little alien man. He's just a little teacher. He's just a little rabbi. Lies, all of it lies. The spirit of God said 1,000 years before he came, Psalm 16, that the Holy One, God in human flesh, would not see decay, predicting the resurrection of Christ a 1,000 years in advance. 
Isaiah, unto us a son is born, unto us a you know, child is born, unto us a son is given. What's his name? Have you read? He's called what? Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor. We, we read the designations 700 years before Jesus came. Quick note, side note, when I engaged Gene Simmons from the rock group Kiss Face to Face, and I engaged him to witness to him at a restaurant, he stood up to me, and he was bigger than me, and he, face to face, and he became very arrogant and said he's, he, he studies Jewish theology, and he knows everything about theology, and, and who is this Jesus in here? What is his real name? And we got into a little debate in the, in the restaurant publicly, and people began to get around and watch. Some people began to take pictures because they realized it was Gene Simmons from the rock group Kiss. And I looked at Gene Simmons, and I said, well, if you understand Jewish theology, have you not read in Isaiah 53, 700 years before he came, that he would be the suffering servant on the cross? Have you not read that this would be Emmanuel, God in human flesh? Have you not read any of the 300 prophecies that spoke about God in human flesh, Christ, from all of the prophets, from all of the writers. Have you not studied that? And in the restaurant, Gene Simmons stood stunned. This is why, as believers, we should be so packed with biblical revelation and understanding that we have a reason for the hope that we have, that we have an answer to give to them. We don't need to stand there with stammering lips and run away from arrogant individuals that want to you know, rip Jesus down and make him only a rabbi. We have an answer. We have a powerful answer. The Spirit of God will then engage. You know what Gene Simmons did next? Looked at me and said this. Okay, then. Okay, then. Who's that third person? You know, the Holy Ghost person. I looked over at Gene, and I smiled because I could feel the Holy Spirit all over me, and I go, I go like this. He's right here, Gene. He's given to everyone who comes to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And Gene Simmons just goes, all right. And Gene Simmons, the whole reason I got to talk to him was I talked the waitress into let me buy his meal so that I can create some kind of engagement with him. And he yelled at the, he yelled at the, he yelled at the waitress, and the waitress finally just pointed over at me and said, he did it! And it started this whole big uh, public engagement. And I had a gospel track that I'd written everything over, and, I, you know, he, and, and, and he's holding it because I gave it to him when I walked over to him. And uh, he's holding it, and he says, all right. He says, all right, all right, all right, I got to go. He says, well, uh, do, I, do I have to? If, if I allow you to buy my lunch, do I have? And he's a, here's a multimillionaire, and here's, here's a little preacher kid making $2 an hour. <laughs> well, maybe a little more than that now. Um, and he says, well, I, if I let you buy this uh, meal, do I have to read the gospel track? See, I already know. The Spirit of God engaged him. I already know the Spirit of God confronted him. And he was stupefied. And it wasn't about winning an argument. The issue was winning a soul. That's what it's all about. It's not about arguing with Van Daniken or Ray Kurzweil or the empty, I want to say it politely, but the empty stupidity of what some think is one of the world's greatest scientists who believes that heaven and God and all that stuff is a fairy tale, sitting in a chair crippled, dying with no answer to that. Or the angry atheist, you know, uh, Dawkins, screaming and railing at God and religion, and he has no answers. The, the biggest truth about atheists is they can scream and yell and, and argue all they want, and then when you stop them and say, well, what is your answer? They don't have one. What do you have inside of you? Nothing. They're empty, angry individuals um, trying to blame it all on God and religion. And their own sin and their own guilt is still there. So the issue is not winning the argument, but having, uh, you, know what, you know what it said about Stephen? When you get packed with the Word of God and packed with the understanding and packed with the answers and you have it all inside of you, when it comes down to it engaging individuals and when they really do engage you in universities and the schools and the rest of the places, here's what it says about the Spirit-filled Stephen. They could not stand up against the wisdom or spirit by which he spoke. The sheer power of the Spirit of God to be able to communicate through a human being to another human being. If you don't have any content of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit reminds you what you have, not what you don't have. So consume the Scripture and the Word of God. And look at the issues around us in the next section here we're going to do. Uh, I will give you more of the underground, the future history and the coming beasts.
We needed to give an answer. We need to proclaim an answer uh, to the rest of the world. In Revelation 6, we have white horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse. This is um, communication in dramatic pictorial form. White horse, the Antichrist. When all of a sudden one of the entities in heaven says, Come and see! And a white horse is unleashed. And instantly, come and see! A pyros, fiery red horse is unleashed. Have you ever heard a sermon? In, I, didn't hear, I haven't heard a sermon in 39 years as a believer on the red horse. Quickly, some prophecy teachers will say, well, that's just war breaks out and a lot of people die. That's not true at all. The red horse, Revelation 6, study at lunchtime. All of a sudden, the Word of God tells us that peace is, arene, peace is taken from the whole earth. And something causes humans to begin to slaughter other humans. The Greek word isn't the word for warfare. It's svadzo, used in Koine Greek for animal butchery and animal ritual sacrifice. Before even the full apocalypse, when Antichrist is released, the first thing on the agenda is Red Horse issue. The underground, old Nazi, black flame, ancient brotherhood, the order, they, maybe I'll explain that in the second half, um, explained their coming designed chaos. They call it, they call it the Black Awakening. What they describe as the Black Awakening is the Red Horse event. A global event. You don't have to call me and ask me, is this occurring? You know, did it, did it you know, did, is homes in Colorado, uh, did it begin? Uh, did Jared in Arizona, did it begin? Uh, the VTech uh, shooter at the University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, did, is, that, is that one of them? Did it begin? When it begins in the future, nobody's going to be able to really call anybody anywhere. Every city in the United States will have highly demonized, highly programmed, those created to be the troops, unleashed. It is not Russia. It is not the rest of the upper world that we're looking at in the news. It's what the biblical prophetic insight tells us. These are the events that will really occur. And I think we're on the edge of it. I think we're really on the edge of it. The coming beasts, how, how does one-fourth of mankind die? After the red horse, then the black horse deals with financial and food chain collapse. The pale horse prophecy is, again, dramatic pictorial communication that one-fourth of mankind, 2.2 billion people in, in today's terms, would die in a very short period. By war, by pestilence, by famine, and by the pharaoh of the earth. Here's what I absolutely can tell you the Theron are not. Giraffes and hamsters gone wild. I don't believe that giraffes and cats and dogs are all going to get demonized and chase down hundreds of millions and kill them. But I do believe Theron, in reference to maybe altered human beings, are going to be involved in the slaughter of hundreds of millions in the near future. A collective spirituality driven and by design and empowered agenda that is counterfeit to God's is among us and apart. In Revelation 12, the Spirit of God, God gives us pro prophecy concerning... Have you ever read Revelation 12 over and over? In this chapter, why does it mention again the dragon, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon. He's defined in that chapter as Luce, he's, he's, Satan, uh, Diablos, uh, the ancient serpent. So we know who the dragon is. The dragon in Revelation 13 gives the beast, Antichrist, and he gives the power and the authority and the throne. He gives the ability. It's all supernatural. 
But in Revelation 12, we're, we're given the definition of the dragon, the, the emerging, uh, huge. Now, we didn't, this is not us. We're not, it's, it's not us kind of sensationalizing the devil. God does this in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Huge, megos, pyros, dracon. He is the ancient serpent. He fights with, with Michael and his angels, does he not? And he gets thrown down. This is the chapter that we read that he becomes furious because he knows his time is short. God gives us insight to that. But in that chapter, here's what it says about the huge pyros, fiery, you know, this, dra this dragon, this, the, the emerging, manifesting global presence of the, of the enemy in his work. That he seeks to lead the whole world astray. If we don't understand from the biblical revelation that it's a globalism, it is a, it is a Satan gone global. He's gone global to acquire the political ideology, to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to assimilate the military uh, vision, to uh, take in the, the economic uh, the funding. You know, the Antichrist has to have a big checkbook when it comes to global government. Where's all the money going? It's all headed in one direction. The ideologies of the world, including the United States, where the concept of globalism is embedded, there is no globalism that's not Luciferic, that doesn't have a spirit inception and spiritually empowered I minutes mean, here in the United States and around the world. The quest for altered humanity, hybrids, ultra humans, or Nephilim from ancient history to reach re recent. How do you answer the New Ages and the rest of them? Uh, 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense or an answer. Apologia is the Greek word, and a reasoned answer. By the, by the power of the Spirit of God, give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason, for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, the idea of respect. So, when, when the world is saying, you know, all the you know, aliens are going to come, they're going to come and visit us. Do you know who they are? Dr. Stephen Greer claiming 300, 300 military and uh, an American intelligence agency individuals, all a part of his inner team. Goes to Mount Shasta, goes to uh, Sedona, goes to Joshua Tree, goes all over the world to what he calls the hotspots with machines and highly trained occultists and new agers that are all already in, enabled by spiritual enablement dark side. Gather together and begin a two or three day process of um, opening a porthole for the Orions. You say, well, that's nuts. Not to them. I read the transcripts. The transcripts done by the individuals that pay the money to go be with him and be out there in the middle of the desert or at Mount Chester or whatever else where they're doing this, they, they begin to express how the entities begin to communicate to them, how the entities have communicated to them that they're going to be the agents to help inform the rest of the world that they're coming to help humanity. They're coming to help humanity with an evolution uh, to superhumanity. They're coming to save humanity. And the transcripts begin to show that they all began to, through their um, opening of the portholes, began to engage the entities as they were dematerializing right before their eyes. And you have people that are in the highest of military intelligence agencies that have been involved. Should we, should we be surprised? The director of intelligence years ago in the United States was who? Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, director of intelligence in the United States of America, who, who's written on super weapons and mind control and the rest. Michael Aquino, do you know who he is? Founder of the Temple of Set. Very highly sophisticated satanic sect who went to Vadelsberg Castle in Germany, where I stood in the Hall of the Dead, and there in the Hall of the Dead, he performed the Vadelsberg working because the Presidio in, in, here in the United States did an investigation charging him with 51 counts of child ritual sexual abuse. Him and another fellow. 
The other fellow got caught. Michael Aquino goes to Vadelsberg to the porthole that I stood at and did the Vadelsberg working to cover his tracks to use supernatural powers. And we, we can sit back and say, well, we think that's nuts that a military person would go after dark powers. That's crazy. Old Testament, Book of Kings, the Moabite king battling Israel. They are, they're, they're, they're a demon-worshipping tribe. And they're battling Israel. What happens? They're losing and losing. He sends 700 soldiers out. They're losing. You know what he does? He takes his own son, goes up to the wall, and does a human sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, to draw the powers. Read it, read it in, in the context of, of looking at the Hebrew words. All of a sudden, the Moabite soldiers, they went into a frenzy because power fell. And they defeated Israel. Supernatural source, a military weaponization of ancient but current dark powers. Let's take a break, and uh, we'll take about a five, six, seven minute break. We'll come to a second half. We're going to give definitive insight to the underground satanic movement, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Blessings.